So, in the meantime, uh, public service announcement. If your ringtone is you might want to change it for this weekend, just so we all don't go insane when someone's phone rings. <laughs> all right. Wow, I haven't seen this many rangers since Hand Down to Destruction. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, in the meantime, I'm going to continue to warm up my volume fan. Everyone enjoying the con so far? <laughs> That's great. I'm, uh, as I said, I'm Peter, I'm the, I'm the head panelist here. I am uh, being awake and not getting any sleep, but I love all of you guys, so it's all worth it. Okay. So, uh, I think we're going to uh, get started here now because we have very little time because I would love to spend hours and hours on each and every one of these wonderful people up here. So let's have them introduce themselves and get things started. Hi, I'm Angie Diaz and I'm playing Vita Rocca on uh, Mystic Force. Woo! as Drew Harrington and Diamond Thunder as Garrett. Uh, 
Nazi. Can anyone tell me who this guy is? No, I'm not here. Yeah, uh, see, just like in the show, he showed up late and, you know, there we go. <laughs> Yeah, your horror story so, from Yeah, I just finished Koichi Camp and we're just, we might have been in our third episode. And uh, there were about 10 of the baddies surrounding me. And the thing was that I had to kind of fall gracefully. But what happened was I missed a step so I fell on my butt. But my butt bone, so there was just kind of like this numbness that went throughout my whole body. But you've got Koichi there, so I'm like, no, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, kind of thing. I've always been very high. So I was like, let's go again. So we go again fall on that exact same spot, which was actually worse the second time, and then we did it again third time, I got it. But that was probably one of my favourite filming days, because then for the rest of the season, I was like, you can't take it easy, you're not actually a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> I got, um... Yeah, go for it. Um, I think it was in the scene, uh, no, it was in the episodes where I was going to a vampire stranger with him, and I actually did get knocked out by, KO'd by Necrolite, a stunt that just... I ended up at the right time, and it was on a full set in the nightclub scene. So there were lots of people on set, and then I remember getting this poor moment. And then I came to, and the AD was like, "You okay? And you okay? Okay, just come and sit down." He put me on a chair on wheels, which then proceeded to roll into the lighting rig. So, and they looked, "You were there." It was only it was, it was Yellow Ranger. If you. Yeah, it's probably lucky because I, no, I, I didn't handle it too well. Because I kind of got up and my head was spinning and I just looked at the AD and went, I'm just going to take five. Out there. Oh, no. <laughs> five minutes, I mean, it was just like, I, was, I didn't know which way was up or down. Yeah. Maybe one of the reasons that they actually film it in New Zealand is this free health care. <laughs> I 
and then I got the Drew Harrington role, which is a bigger role, and I was turning into the bad guy and all this, and I had to turn around with this laser, and he's like, okay, now you turn around, you turn around, you do this. I was like, okay. So I turn around, and they go, action, I turn around, and I go, Drew! <laughs> <laughs> and they go, what the hell did, was that? And I go, what? And they go, listen to the playback, you actually made a laser noise, we can see your mouth move. <laughs> <We're doing, laughs> like, we do that in post, man. And I was like, oh shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> So that was a little embarrassing and uh, yeah, it's my story. <laughs> um, one of the things that I remember was um, trying to convince Koichi for about 40 minutes to let me do a backflip. And, um, uh, and I finally succeeded and it, uh, I, I landed it, I did, yes. I was able to, to do it. But all the stunt guys were, were really impressed slash scared because um, um, it was an abnormality, I think, and uh, yeah, I I remember just looking at him for 40 minutes straight, trying to bore into the back of his head, you know, and then finally he looks at me, and I'm still eyeballing him, and he, and he finally relents, and he kind of gave a little nod, and whispered something to one of the stunt guys, and they came running up going, all right, let's do this, and they're all very, very excited, and, um, um, but on screen, you actually see it, and um, it's happened so quick, you wouldn't even know it was me, so it was like, uh, <laughs> Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, Koichi, I can do it, I promise. I've done lots of gymnastics. And um, um, and I actually went training with those stunt guys. I think that maybe that was what, because um, I think you saw me bouncing on the trampoline. Uh, fine. But I think in his mind, he's like, you're going to be trouble for me, and I was. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, saying, I found it was fantastic having a dialect um, coach. I forget his, um, his lovely name. Jim, of course. Jim, of course. Um, and he was fantastic, and he was there the entire time. Um, often I would slip up on my American accent, being Australian, that doesn't sound anything like it. But um, there was there was one line in particular saying lava, <laughs> lava lizards. Um, every time I yeah, lava lizards. It, it always was, yeah, I get tricked my mouth. Can I do it now? Um, okay. Um, Lara. 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 If any of you could change roles of someone else in your season, like you got cast differently, what role would you pick if you had to pick a different one? Could it Red Ranger. <laughs> Red Ranger. I think I might have left it a bit late. But yeah. yeah. Just I like the idea that you can lead them off. Yeah. Just because of your colour. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go with yellow. Because yellow's my actual favourite colour from a kid. And I like and I love Chip. I thought yeah. Chip was hilarious. He made me laugh every day on set. So I would kidnap him and I'd like, I don't know, do something. I'd, Turn him into a tree, and then I'd become, I'd become a magician and be here. And I'd steal your helmet, and then we'd all, everything would be okay. I, from our season, I really like the uh, the lion, the black lion ranger. I thought he was bad. But he became good, woman. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, I would probably, I don't know, um, I think uh, maybe Miratrix, just to be a bit yeah. of a badass. <laughs> yeah, she was cool and uh, such a lovely girl, Frida, but um, yeah, maybe a baddie, that would be cool. I, I liked um, Kelson's character. No. <laughs> I just like the way he played it, I just thought, yeah, that's pretty cool, I like playing, you know. Oh. You're wearing something like crazy suit, so like you look like you're wearing something like wrong. No, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Good And since he's not here, and all of you had to, favorite Kelsey story. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not here. <laughs> Oh, that was so funny. There was, remember, like, Phineas? Yeah. 
he comes up and he um, thinks that Richard has turned into an actual tree. Like the, the spell's complete, right? And he goes up and he hugs and he's like, hug! And it's, and it's actually just a tree that's hugging, but it, it's, it's so, so poetic. He was yeah. just fantastic as Phineas the Shrubber. That's it! <laughs> much time with Kelson. I mean, on, on set, it was more kind of outside. Yeah. He's just always making you laugh. I um, mean, he's here today. Mm -hmm. You guys have met him and, and chatted to him. He's just a great guy with such, you know, such funny banter. And he, um, you know, he was always making us laugh outside. But yeah, as far as actually working with him on set, I think I only worked with him maybe one or two days in the entire season. Yeah. 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 If anyone gets the chance, get Kelson to make you a steak. He has the best steak oh, restaurant yeah. in New Zealand. Uh, So at this point, people start running up over here for questions, and we'll see if we can get ourselves some wonderful answers. I want to thank every single one of you for coming. You. Wait, wait, wait. We want to thank you guys, because if it weren't for you guys, we wouldn't be here. Thank you. Um, for, for, first, I'd like to say, um, I'm, I'm, I think it's hilarious how the one-time plan Xander actually worked. It was Vita who used it. <laughs> okay. Uh, it, it was really unfortunate that Mystic Force and Jungle Fury didn't have team-ups like other seasons did, whether they were writing reasons, budget reasons, other reasons. You could probably elaborate on that better than I could. Um, uh, but if uh, Mystic Force did somehow have a team up with SPD and Jungle Fury had a team up with Operation Overdrive, any any kind of uh, scenes or interactions that any of you would want uh, to be included in the hypothetical team up? And I would like to hear like, all of your opinions on this, yeah. especially yours. Jackie, I think you can make this. Well, I, I have to say that. Um, we should have done more team-ups with these seasons. I think at the time we were just concentrating on standalone seasons because the themes were so different in, in these years. But just these casts are so extraordinary and we had so much fun that we should have done team-ups and we should have found a way to do team-ups. So, uh, you know, get in my time machine and write some good team-ups for these for these guys because they're the best. We'll come back, we'll come back and do it. All right, we're yeah. signing up. Yeah, signing up. Job of it, and we're like, let's just keep 
using that because it, it was it was organic to the character, like really confident, and we just had so much fun with it. So I think we wrote it in once, and it just works. So we're like, let's keep doing it. And probably with the Australian accent, plans and uh, yeah, it, you, you did such a beautiful job of saying it. Uh, <laughs> uh, so that actually, uh, the final question was going to relate to that. So I was going to say the comments I was going to say for you guys beforehand. Anna, I loved your episode of Legend of the Seeker. I, for one, I for one like the fact that Plan Xander involved not immediately rushing to violence. Sorry. Angie, uh, since Vita's hair was very much part of her character, I want to say you look great today. Thank you. Uh, Dwayne, to make you feel better, everyone who was filming the prequel for the, uh, for the Star Wars was making je uh, Jedi lightsaber noises as they were filming. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, I like your character wasn't explored enough in the series. A lot of people say that. That's yeah. Uh, we talked last panel. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Kelson, thank you for being the sort of the glue uh, that put every single New Zealand uh, season together, uh, holds them all together. And also, maybe one of the best mentors in the entire franchise.
I love that we can explore the relationship between Chip and Vita. And um, we really got to the heart of Vita, I think, as well. And, um, and you know, the true loyalty that was really important for both of those characters. So, yeah, Adam was just really cool to be a vampire. <laughs> I remember the episode where Tyson's girlfriend Vala turns up. Yes. Um, probably, there were a lot of really cool episodes, like um, the Halloween episode was really cool because everyone was like, wearing a mask, playing with the ranger, wearing a mask. A Halloween mask, so you're like so deep in your masks, it's kind of crazy on set. Yeah. <laughs> but the episode with Vala, because um, they cast Beth Allen, who I've worked with the tribe for three years, so, and you're talking about all this history, and so it was like a three year rehearsal for that episode. So everything we were playing on the episodes was so like memories of stuff we have worked with for three years. So we're like, remember that time? We were like, yeah, we do remember that time. And then the flashback. So yeah, that was cool. Um, yeah. Oh, look, I have to say, um, I really enjoyed, I actually really enjoyed working with you, Dwayne, uh, doing the Man of Mercury. Um, yeah, um, those episodes were great. I think, you know, touching on what Richie was saying, just how, you know, it was um, it was a nice message that was sitting that in that episode. How I was encouraging, uh, you know, ties on to join the group and to join the team. That was there was some really special moments that you know we shared. And it was really nice to work a lot more with you. Um, I have to say, the first episode that we ever shot um, in the first three episodes, that was just so much fun because they were the first time that we that was the first time that we actually spent together as a group. Um, and that was really special and we just, we were so excited and the whole season and we just all bonded so, so beautifully and um, but th those first few days were just, it was just like a whirlwind, you just thought you were on another planet, you were like, oh my gosh, what am I doing here? I'm a Power Ranger, oh my gosh, you know, it was just, yeah, it was epic. Uh, uh, I, I, I would probably have to go uh, the so where Phineas has to go to the dentist. Uh, just, um, just, I uh, got to uh, play with Barney, uh, Barney Duncan, who is an amazing, amazing actor and a, and a friend. And you know, we sort of spent all of SPD, you know, on set around each other. But they had, and there was a time where we got to come together and just try and outdo each other constantly. So it was that. Uh, it was a really, it was a really good time. Hello, everyone. My name is Jay. I'm from Phoenix. Uh, this is my first Power Morphicon ever, so that's my 25th anniversary. I had to come. I had to. And I want to say, first and foremost, thank you. It was um, uh, SPD initially stuck, restarted it for me, but it was your seasons that carried me through, and I still watch the series to this day. I still do, just to see what the storyline is and how it unfolds. Um, I have a question for Anna, if it's okay. Of course. Um, when you, as Lily, were stunned, I think, I believe it was stunned by a porcupine. You never messed with a porcupine. One, I learned that from Homer Bound, The Incredible Journey, okay? <laughs> um, so, my question is, as an actress, you know, you're usually playing your usual self as your character Lily, but then after you got stung by the porcupine, um, it would be, as we say in Star Trek, it's like paying the, uh, the mirror universe version of yourself. What was the challenge like to develop mentally for that, and how did you execute it? Well, um, just a little secret. I'm actually a real bitch. <laughs> so that was my easiest episode. <laughs> You're, you hit the nail on the head right there. You do get to play the antithesis of what you have been playing. So um, I think it was kind of nice actually, because instead of being all smiley and trying to get everybody together, it was like a chance for you to be like, oh, screw this, screw that, let's just go wild. Um, so yeah, I had heaps of fun, and oftentimes I'll say that that was my favorite episode to shoot. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's that classic Rangers thing where you learn the story, the, you learn your lesson and then the end and it all comes right and apologies to Fran, my lord, she's over there. Um, but yeah, it was super fun and once again we're just so lucky to have the writers that we had to play around with what we could do. So yeah, I had a blast. And it was super fun to make up and all of that. And girl, those chicken wings. I was like, I'm going to need to do another take and another take and another. And I'm like, no, you really don't. 
Do you not know if it those pants? So, yeah, that was fun. All from one stubborn, hard to find porcupine. Cook. <laughs> yeah, right? I thought we had them all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi. Like I said, I loved uh, Once a Ranger, and I love Once a Ranger. Um, I'm curious, though, if there was any. Uh, first of all, how did you decide which Rangers to bring in for the team up, and was there anyone you wanted to bring in that you couldn't because they weren't available? Yeah, that's that's a logistical question and a production side question. Um, so, was there the, anyone that you like, would have liked to have brought in but you weren't able to? I can't say that there's a, that there's anybody that I would have switched out for who we got. Um, don't I have we got five. a great team together. Um, it, it's always a challenge because you want to give the current Rangers screen time and the uh, returning Rangers screen time. And you have to have a long battle zone. So. I wish it could have made the story a little meatier, um, but um, I think it, it turned out very good and hopefully the message I was trying to write in the episode came through about everyone is valuable and once a ranger. Like, I think this convention is it's kind of the essence of that because all the panels, you know, all the actors, they know each other now and we all come together for the love of the show, so I think once a ranger is a great message for this convention, because once a ranger, always oh, oh, a ranger. Thank you. Hi, everybody. First off, I want to say that like someone else mentioned about SPD being their entry back. Mystic Force was mine back in. So I left my room for a long time, and Mystic was the first one I got back into. Uh, my question is actually for Jackie. It is a question that we've all been wondering for 10 years. Who is RJ's connection to the Morphin Grid? RJ's connection to the Morphin in the first, In the second episode, RJ goes, I knew this guy who knew this other guy who had an uncle who had a connection. Tap with the Morphin Grid. I think hopefully what we tried to do with his dad episode, like his dad, was a spirit ranger, so um, the Morgan Grid is is not a familiar. Uh, it's not a corporal thing. It's like an energy that that all rangers kind of share. So I think that was just RJ's way of saying, like in his kind of hippie kind of way, that uh, he had a, a, um, a connection to his dad. So his dad was a spirit ranger, and uh, that's why he was connected to the Morgan Grid. Make sense? Kind of. It's just the fact that because he said he, he knew somebody who made the morphers, the solar morphers that Lily, Theo, and Casey used to harness the ranger power. Right. Because like I said, he knew a guy who knew a guy who had an uncle. Yeah, that was just like, that was kind of just like a joke. It uh, was it was a joke. Was we've RJ's. all been wondering that for ten years. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> that was Bruce. That was Bruce. 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 Bruce.
side character, or so, a character who wasn't a ranger, um, if you could make them a ranger from your series, who would that be? Phineas. That's a good idea. Phineas. Or Carlos. You get to choose. I still want to be the first male pink. Alright, so 
my question is for the cast. So I'm wondering, as a big fan of each theme of each season, for like Jungle Fear, I love the martial arts aspect. For Mr. Uh, Mr. Force, I love the uh, Harry Potter magical element. And if Opera Overdrive, I love the Indiana Jones type of adventure thing. So how how did you guys um, how did you guys what did you guys think of the fact of, of just the theme of each season, and being able to you know what you guys got the roles and just knowing the theme of it. Yeah, how did you feel about it? I loved it. I did a keto and karate when I was a young one, so that martial arts aspect was super good to me. Plus, also I like combat um, rather than lasers in a sense, so that was kind of fun because then it's more um, tangible from your own set, like you're actually doing the combat, which Koichi and stuff give you. So that was super epic for me if you got to play around with that. I felt very, very good. So it's like, Always fun to say which other series would you do, but I wouldn't change a thing. I would always be in the general area. Yeah. And so, we weren't at all of the um, camp and when we were all doing the martial arts and the high school and stuff like that. It was super fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I came in later to the, to the show, and um, you know, you're coming into a, a powerhouse. Uh, Iconic um, pop culture icon. Yeah, um, it was a very special time for me, and, and to meet these guys who kind of you know pioneered it for our series, and so I got to um, just really uh, have a lot of fun, and they, they taught me the ropes basically. You know that I had the stunt guys surround me, and we, we worked on the my special uh, morphing sequence and whatnot. Um, so yeah, in terms of the themes. Yeah, kind of looking out for each other it was, uh, it was pretty special. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's the best of answers, but how did I feel about the martial arts aspect? I um, I did a lot of training as a young guy as well. Like, I did um, uh, I did like for a, I did a martial arts film, um, a short film, but I was in training for about two and a half months, and so again backflips and stuff. So that's why I got to do that on the power rangers on the big stage as such. Yeah, um, but but then the sun guys just you know you do your little thing and then they'll do like three backflips and you're like okay you win. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was an amazing experience. I'm very very humbled and, and appreciative to be part of it and to see all you guys now. It's really cool. The matching. Magic. You know what was so cool about the matching is that we ended up in the most craziest of situations. Thank you, Jackie. Yeah. And pits of sinking, sand. sinking sand where the mud. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, chased by massive spiders and yeah. wrapped up in spider webs. Yeah. Like, um, anything that that was what was so cool. Our, our season was so out there in terms of being so wonderfully playful, and I think that means that our characters really could just go, you know, be quite you, know, crazy sometimes. Yeah. yeah. We had fun with it. Yeah. <laughs> like when the giant. Oh, that was my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> because I got to say Yeah. And you guys making all the spells and stuff, like creating spells and. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to remember how to set a spell. And trying to yeah. remember how to and set a spell. And the book of. The Xanatone! The Xanatone! Opening that Xanatone. That's amazing. Which was your favorite spell, Richie? Abracadabra. <laughs> The whole treasure hunt thing, going to Egypt and kind of being part of that, like ancient world of archaeology, and, um, and also being like the weird, the interesting angle to your question is like doing because I was on ESPD and I wasn't like it, and it's like the aspect of the scripts and the storyline versus the props and the environment you're in, like the space thing in ESPD versus say the Indiana Jones thing and um, and Operation Overdrive. Visually on set, you feel that difference with sets and stuff. But if any, more than anything, it's chemistry. That's what you remember. That's what you feel. That every day you wake up, you're going to be these guys. And I remember that vibe when he's with you. And there's no right or wrong. It's like your brothers or your sisters. You don't have a family for something. But you know what I mean? But you're just like a family. Like I'm with this family. And, and that really kind of shapes your perception of what you remember. Their run. I mean, personally, I like the ties on them, like turning up as an alien. You know, I remember reading the script thinking of um, Saving Private Ryan, 
met Damon, and, the, and he was separate from the cast. And I remember turning up, and these guys were all established. And they had this clip. And I was a bit outside. I was like trying to be friends with them. I'm like, <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. But you know when you arrive late at the party? Yeah. And like, I kind of came in, and these guys have been hanging out, and like, living, you know, having fun, and, and I kind of used them. And, and the characters, as an outsider, that, that's just my first memory. Yeah, and just going with what Dwayne was saying too, just with the sets and the locations, and everything that had to transpire, because we were really lucky that we were, we were in so many different locations for our series, you know? Um, uh, 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 the themes. Um, I, I guess I love the, the magic of uh, Mystic Force because in no other world could I get away with the stuff I got away with. It's been yes. and, you know, I just got to be as crazy as I want. And they, they let me have, you know, they'll be like, can I just try this? And they'll be like, okay. So yeah, I got to do all sorts of loony stuff that I, that I wouldn't get to do in a in, uh, less magical realm. Um, Overdrive, I guess, was really different because I, I was quite separate. Like the, the Flurious Cave was really, it was the, you know, the B set, and uh, we didn't really leave there because uh, we were ice people. So it's, I, I don't really have, you know, that was kind of a, a different thing for me. I mean, it was quite fun, but I didn't really get, get to play with the Ranger team quite as much. And yeah, Jungle Fleury, I was literally on the other side of town in a booth. Yeah. I got a couple of days on set, which is nice. Yeah. This, uh, this uh, chap is very welcoming. Thank you guys. And I got to hang out with him. Yeah, Kaz and I actually worked together when we were 16. I was 16. Yeah. In the stables. Yeah. So we already knew each other before we knew this ranger world. Oh, that's awesome. And I just want to say a word about Kelson's ability to craft a character, like we would come up with like some broad strokes of a character and then Kelson would really bring that char character to life and make it his own. With, with his comedic skills, it's like we would say, how about, how about like a troll? And then Phineas would be completely his own creation, so. And then the next season, we, he would be, a, you know, a nice monster. He would be a, a, a yeti, completely different from Phineas, so. You know, we owe Carlson so much to the skill that brings <laughs> I have a question for all of you. It's more of a general question. I, have you ever looked back, watched the series? Have you ever watched the series looking back as um, you, you watch yourself as these characters? And have you ever like re-experienced those emotions? Have you ever cried watching yourself in these roles, or laughed or felt what the characters were feeling? And also, this one's for Kelso. It's a completely separate question from these three seasons. How did it feel to be partially a Red Ranger? In uh, Ninja Storm, <laughs> Ninja Storm was well, because it was fragmented. Um, should I quickly get that one out of the way? Um, uh, I mean, I have such an association with the show for a long time, so uh, I think probably more than anyone, I, I knew what it meant to put on red spandex. So um, yeah, it was uh, yeah, I'm immensely proud to join the select few. It was terrifying because I got like two weeks notice. I'm like, I'm, I'm not 40 years old. I'm not in the right shape to wear red spandex. But um, but yeah, once I got that out of the way, yeah, absolute honor. Um, yeah. 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 Things can you do? And I don't know, because I have a cheeky kind of character. 
But um, uh, since then, meeting everyone you know in this room uh, who's come up uh, and seeing their kind of connection to what we created way back when, you know, uh, it's pretty special. So I want to say thank you very much to all you guys for these memories. Yeah. And, uh, yeah.
touching experience, and I never thought I'd have that experience with any of the art I've ever created. So I don't know if that answers your question in a way like maybe it is possible to do that. And I was very thankful for that experience. Yeah. Alright, we're almost almost out of time. So first we have one quick announcement from Olivia. Uh now, okay. Uh you sure? Yeah, maybe well, well, okay, alright. I um a bit uncomfortable now. You put me on the spot. Right? <laughs> um, um, uh, I just We're all invited to back to New York! Woo! <laughs> Drinks on me! Uh, 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 so I wanted to say, um, again, I've said it before, but properly, you, we kind of do this for you guys, uh, and I and, um, wanted to say thank you so much. This is my first uh, Morphicon, and um, you've made me feel very, very welcome here, and I really appreciate uh, you guys. I have a little thing, because um, I'm leaving in about an hour and a half, but um, uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, I've got, an, yeah, I've, I've got um, a little gift for everyone in this room, and it's a poster of Rhino Ranger, but it's a, it's a big thing, and... Um, um, it's, 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 it's this. Um, anyway, whoever wants one, come over here and you can get a big poster. Um, Woo! Yes. Yeah. No, 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 no. After, after, it's okay. Everyone in this room is getting one. Okay. So we have time for one last question, and then I think some people have to do a morphic sequence. Yeah. Well, then I'll make mine in a relatively short here. Uh, mine is actually for the uh, Jungle Fury people. Uh, basically, uh, the show was about learning and about growth and about depending on other people and just kind of just growing that way. I just wanted to know, how did you actually do that yourself, Seth, after the experience of the show? So, sorry, what was the question? Learning and growing. Oh, are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. learning and growing and during the show itself. Absolutely, absolutely. You, um, uh, you learn how to tell stories, you learn how to um, um, really honor and, and love your cast members. Um, uh, you see how a big mechanism is made, and you see how there, much love there is from the, the writers and uh, the production team to make it as, you know, highest quality possible, because you guys don't miss a beat, and, uh, you know, if we stuff up, you guys are going to tell us all about it, you know, and uh, I don't think we've stuffed up. I think we did pretty well, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we, we, we grew a lot, learning all those lessons, basically. Yeah. All right, we have time for one quick one. Hello, Rangers. Hello. 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 Oh, um, my my question is for for all you guys. Uh, does it does it bother you guys that you never get to team up with the previous or few, next year's Ranger team like like the, the Saban teams did? It bothers me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't sleep at night. <laughs> it doesn't bother me because I've got two. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Richie got to do it. I felt very lucky. Yeah. I, I would love to. I, I reckon oh. we should all just make our own team up. Right now! <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Darren and Fury had a really good team as it was, so the fact that we didn't team up or anything, we had such a strong team. Thank you. And we'll so no so so movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Of course, of course. If, if someone asked me, I would be there in a heartbeat. That would be awesome. I like, I like um, Anna's idea though. I think all of us should team up and, and be a new uh, I've, got, I've got a quick question for everybody. Because like, I hear this all the time. Like, where's all the Operation Overdrive guys? And like, there's no representative. Would anyone like to see more Operation Overdrive? Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
Operation Overdrive. Yeah! <laughs> Ready. Ready. Magic for Source. Mystic Four. Now, I can't remember it that well, but it's going to look a little something like this. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.